Hello everybody, uh, this morning I wanted to make a quick video to talk about the different types of cutters and rakers on chainsaw chains and uh, you know for years I've been on internet forums for forestry and chainsaws and what I found is there's a lot of confusion about this and a lot of times people pick the wrong chain and or, or, or talk about chains and don't know what they're talking about and you know it can be as innocent as them getting poor cutting performance from a chain or you know, as serious as, as being a safety hazard because they don't understand the chain. So I wanted to talk about two of the common uh, factors when picking chains. I'm gonna focus on using uh, steel chains mainly because they, they make it easy to talk about with their the model numbers they put on chains. Now the first factor I wanna talk about is the type of cutter. And there are actually many types of cutters, but the two most common ones are full chisel and semi-chisel. And uh, you can see an example of full chisel right here. And these are basically cutters that have a squared off corner on the cutter. And that typically gives you better cutting performance, but that corner is much more vulnerable. And these types of chains can dull a lot quicker. So if you're doing any production cutting, if you're cutting uh, dirty wood, you know, logs that might have been dragged around or skidded out. Uh, this type of chain is going to dull quicker on you and you'll spend more time sharpening this, this type of chain in the field. Now, you know, when I'm cutting wood all day long, I'm, I might be sharpening my chain uh, half a dozen times anyways, but uh, if you're using full chisel, you'll definitely be sharpening more just because this chain, uh, its performance is just much more uh, susceptible to any dulling. Uh, because of the, the the corner on those cutters. The other type of cutter that's very common is semi-chisel. And if I get up close to this, hopefully you can see. Let me see if I can come over here. Uh, the cutters on semi-chisel, if the camera will focus, there we go. These are rounded. They have a rounded corner and that reduces their cutting performance, but it makes these much more robust. And these will last a lot longer before they dull. And so, again, if you're doing production cutting where you're working all day and you're you know, gonna need to be sharpening your chain frequently, if you switch to semi-chisel, chances are you're gonna be more productive because you will need less breaks to change chains or sharpen chains. And so uh, that's really the deal between full chisel and semi-chisel. Uh, I use them both myself, kind of interchangeably, but if I know I'm going to be cutting dirty logs or cutting wood all day long or doing a you know production type work, uh, hands down I will pick semi-chisel because it, it's going to be a more productive chain for me. Now the other, oh and let me, let me talk about one more thing before I move on. In the world of steel chains, uh, they, 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 give these chains two different names. Semi-chisel chains, they call rapid micro. Um, and any other semi-chisel chains are gonna start with RM. So that's rapid micro, that's semi-chisel with the rounded cutter. For full chisel, they call that rapid super. And those chains are gonna start with the RS. So if you see any RS chains, uh, those are full chisel. And those will give you better performance, but again, those are going to dull quicker. The other factor, uh, the other common factor and then the one that's confused a lot is whether it's a standard chain or a safety chain. And, and then going further, you know, whether one or the other is going to be important or relevant to your work. And uh, I've got two different types of chains put on my saws here. One, I've got a steel 461 and then a Husky 562 XP, both great saws. Over here on the Husky is a standard chain. And with each cutter, you've got a depth raker and that's it. And so it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, and, and the only purpose that depth raker is to set the depth of your cut, control how fast the saw cuts, uh, how smooth it cuts and, and so on. Over here, on the steel, I've got a safety chain. And here the raker is a little bit more complicated. 
on these chains you've got the the depth raker um, it's part of the the cutter tooth and then you've got an additional safety raker and along the flat of the bar where most homeowners are cutting if you're doing firewood you're pretty much always cutting on the flat of the bar uh, these two teeth they collapse in line with each other they have the same profile and as long as you're cutting on the flat of the bar and that could be a standard cut with the bottom or an undercut with the top you should notice no difference between a standard chain and a safety chain because those extra safety rakers are stowed and that's very important to realize some people don't realize that but on the flat of the bar there's really zero difference in cutting performance i've heard some people say well you know i can tell the difference well okay if you're a lumberjack running a hot saw in a competition you know there's probably more friction with a safety raker but for the rest of us you really will not notice a difference where you will notice a difference with safety rakers is at the tip of the bar and what happens at the tip of the bar is that as the chain comes around the radius of the tip now those safety rakers pop out they're no longer stowed uh, behind uh, the, the depth raker and you can see I'm pointing to the safety raker in front here the depth raker is behind it that safety raker pops out and what that does is that gives you additional resistance to kickback. It prevents, uh, it, or it's gonna alleviate, it won't totally prevent, but it's gonna alleviate kickback because it's gonna give you a kind of an extended raker and prevent that cutter from grabbing in so severely. And so what that means is if you're cutting with the tip of the bar, and in fact, you can see the same thing happening here. It's started to pop out because that's turning around the, the tip. Um, if you're doing cuts up here, and that would be plunge cuts or bore cuts, you will totally notice this. And in fact, if it's a good safety chain, if it's actually doing what it's supposed to, you'll have a hard time making a plunge or a bore cut, and it could be downright dangerous because you're trying to do it with a chain that doesn't support that kind of a cut. Um, and so, you know, that's the, that's the point of the safety chain. Minimize kickback by uh, preventing grabbiness of the cutters at the tip. A kickback really happens because you know you can have these cutters grabbing anywhere along the the bar, but when they ha when it happens at the tip and it happens when the cutter's moving down, uh, all of a sudden you got a lot of leverage of that kickback effect, and it's going to want to you know kick the saw back. If it happens elsewhere, it's not a big deal, but when it happens at the tip, it's a big deal. So that's why we want we want we would want these safety rakers up at the tip. This is a great idea for homeowners. Uh, there's there's situations for pro cutters. Uh, with long bars where you know you're not going to be doing bore cuts with these crazy long bars um, you might as well run a, a safety chain as well it's going to it's going to give you a nice safety advantage everywhere else um, it would only hurt you if you're trying to do a plunge cut or bore cut you probably won't be doing it with a big saw like this when I do a plunge or bore cut you know I'm going to go to my little bit smaller saw it's, it's easier to handle I can be more surgical with it and in those situations, there's no way in heck I want a safety chain. I want to go with a regular chain that's going to give me full cutting performance at the tip of the bar. Um, you know, you have to be careful, but at this point in my life, I'm old enough and done this long enough, I know what I'm doing and I feel safe doing it. Um, homeowners, typical, you know, firewood cutters, that's a rare situation when they should be doing a, a plunge cut or a bore cut. And so, for those types of folks, you know, I say for sure, uh, go with the safety chain uh, because it's gonna buy you some extra safety. And <clears throat> for the, you know, 99% of the cutting you're doing along the flat of the bar, you're not gonna notice a difference. Now in the world of steel chains, <clears throat> they will indicate uh, safety or standard chain a couple different ways. Normally if you see chain with a green box, that's gonna be safety chain. By the way, they have safety bars and standard bars also, green and yellow. Um, when you see a chain with a yellow box, that's gonna be your standard chain without the safety rakers. There's one other way to tell. If you look at the chain code, uh, if you see a C there, then it's a standard chain, no safety rakers. If you see a three there, then it's gonna be a 
safety chain with the rakers. Now where a lot of confusion comes in, I see people associate semi-chisel or full chisel with safety or standard chain and they mix the two up and that's unfortunate because you can you can buy a chain that has each of those specific features and does what you want and I'll give you an example. So this would be full chisel standard chain. Here's a full chisel safety chain. Here's a semi chisel safety chain. And then you can also buy a RMC, which would be uh, a standard chain that's semi chisel. And you can mix and match those characteristics, you know, any way you want. You don't have to buy it one way or the other. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you know, sometimes you can't find those in the dealership. You might have to special order the chains, but, uh, and I think that's probably where the confusion comes with. People maybe can only get, you know, green chains and semi chisel and yellow chains and full chisel and they associate that together and that's not absolutely not the case you could definitely mix and match them and get a very specific chain setup that you want and so that's kind of what i wanted to go over today um, <clears throat> again you know if i was talking to a homeowner i would say first of all definitely get a green chain uh, you're gonna you're you're gonna be doing most of your cutting on the flat of the bar. You're not gonna be doing hardly any cutting in the tip of the bar, and so you really should get a green chain and get yourself some extra safety margin, for sure. If you're a pro, you know, pick green or yellow depending on the application. Um, uh, like I said, this is the saw I pick up when I need to do a plunge or a bore cut, and for that I definitely want to run a, a yellow chain. I want to be able to cut with the tip. And I've gotten the skills and, and uh, made enough mistakes over the years to have respect for that tip. So, you know, at this point, I know what I'm doing, but the average homeowner really should not be cutting with the tip of their bar. Okay. And then again, to review, you know, if you want full on cutting performance, then go with full chisel. Just realize that it's going to dull very easily and you'll be sharpening it more. And so if you're doing production cutting, um, you know, if you're gonna, if you know you're cutting dirty wood, if you don't know what you're gonna be cutting and you're out in the field and you just need to get work done, for sure, go with that semi chisel. It's gonna be much, much more robust and make you much more productive. That's it. Thanks for watching.